Hello, today you will be learning about the reactivity of transition metals. By Jacqueline. Solomon. Isra. And Suzanne. Before we can begin discussing the reactivity of transition metals, we have to pose the question, what is a transition metal? The widely accepted definition is that a transition metal is one which forms one or more stable ions which have incompletely filled orbitals or shells. Now what exactly does that mean? To put this in perspective, take a look at argon. It's a noble gas which has two electrons in its first shell, eight electrons in the second shell, and another eight in the valence shell. Scandium, which is a transition metal, only has three more electrons than argon, but its electron setup looks like two in the first shell, eight in the second, nine in the third, and two in the valence shell. Transition metals are able to exceed the eight electron limit, going up to 18 and even 32, like in gold. Therefore, when scandium has nine electrons in its third shell, it's incompletely filled. Now that we understand what a transition metal is, we can move on to where it's found, and that would be in the middle of the periodic table, specifically groups 3 to 12. They are what connect the metals on the left-hand side to the metalloids and nonmetals on the right-hand side, hence the name transition metals. Some common properties of these metals include the formation of colored compounds, they're good conductors of heat and electricity, they're malleable, meaning they can be hammered or bent into shape easily, and they have high melting and boiling points. And one more unique property that transition metals exhibit is the way they bond with other elements. Most elements use their last shell of electrons to bond with other elements, like calcium, but transition metals can use the last shell and the second last shell to bond, like copper. This is what allows them to have multiple oxidation numbers. For example, manganese, which is able to form ions with charges of 2+, plus, 4+, plus, and 7+. Plus. And lastly, transition metals tend to be a lot less reactive than the regular metals and nonmetals, except, of course, noble gases. I'll now be discussing the current state of research on transition metals. Due to many propositions stated worldwide, there is a numerous amount of research studies happening. There is a common interest at Princeton University about the discovery of new transition metals including intermetallic, oxide, penictide, and chalogenide compounds. For many decades, transition metals, especially of the 3D elements, have been a stimulating topic of interest when in their solid states. This is due to the variety of electrical, magnetic development, and structural properties in which they display. The findings of high temperature ultraconductivity in copper oxides drove the fact that the electro and magnetic properties of this periodic table family and properties to crystallize was poorly understood. There is a limited knowledge of complex solids. Instead of acting like non-interacting particles, as in the classic picture of solids, they are really interacting with each other. The Hartwig Group also has a study going on where they aim to explore, develop, and grasp new transition metal catalyzed reactions. The capacity of this study ranges from catalytic, aromatic substitution to the function of alkanes to the selective formation of bonds. The theme of this research is the discovery of fundamentally new transition metal chemistry and its development into practical methods. These goals are reached by obtaining intuition from accurate mechanistic studies. Hi, I will now be talking about the benefits of transition metals in our society. The main transition metals I'm going to be talking about are iron, copper, zinc, and a few other elements. Transition metals are extremely useful metals because of their lack in corrosion and strength. The most common use of transition metals is that they recover metal from low-grade ores and facilitate high-quality electroplating. Electroplating is when a metal object is being coated by electrolytic depositioning with another metal. Transition metals are also used directly as catalysts in industrial chemical processes. The definition of a catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of a chemical reaction without itself suffering from any permanent change. I will also be talking about alloys. And alloys are basically a mixture of one metal with another metal or non-metal substance. Iron is one of the transition metals that I will talk about next. Iron is malleable, a good conductor, and is physically strong. Iron is usually stronger when combined with other elements. This transition metal is an alloy when it combines with other elements to create steel. 
Now, steel is used in many structural items in the world, such as bridges, car engines, kettles, and ships, and etc. The real importance of alloys is that they are designed to have properties for specific uses. For example, low carbon steels are easily shaped for car bodies because they are more malleable. High carbon steels are hard because more elements have been added to it, and stainless steels are resistant to corrosion and so on. Talking about copper, pure copper is too soft for many uses. They are mixed with small amounts of similar metals, forming an alloy that would make the copper stronger and harder for everyday use. Copper is used for electrical wiring and plumbing through houses. It is soft, which can be bent, but hard enough to make pipes and it does not react with water, which is beneficial. For example, an alloy of copper would be brass. Brass is created with a combination of zinc and copper. The brass is harder than copper and zinc both, but is more malleable. It is used for fixtures, screws, springs, doorknobs, and instruments such as trumpets and trombones. Because the brass is in fact stronger, its advantage towards the society is that it does not rust, causes less friction, which means it remains smooth, it is easier to bend, and it is more environmental friendly because the brass pipes can be used in fewer amounts. There are many sites of corrosion of tower bases in the water, and because of this outcome, the corrosion causes severe damage that will cause a chain of reactions to our society. The benefits of zinc to the society is to help prevent corrosion on structures. Any steel structures being affected by the corrosion are usually protected with a zinc coating because it is less likely to corrode than iron. For example, in this picture, the tower has been painted but not protected. To prevent this from happening, zinc is sprayed onto the tower and then painted. Even when or if the paint is chipped away, corrosion will not occur unless all of the zinc is consumed. Gold is one of the few transition metals that does not corrode in water or air. Because it is highly unreactive, the bonds between the atoms and molecules tend to break and form another material. Gold is traditionally used for jewelry and decorative objects but can also conduct electricity. Majority of the world's silver supply is used by photographers for developing pictures. Due to its excellent ability to conduct heat and electricity, silver is also used in the electronics industry, but over time, manufacturers have turned to a more cost-effective alternative, which is usually copper or aluminum. Silver is also commonly used in jewelry and for decorative purposes. Cadium is a silvery white and shiny metal soft enough to be cut with a knife. It chemically behaves much more like zinc, hence the idea of a zinc group. Today, cadmium is used in batteries and for electroplating of other metals to protect them against corrosion. Because the cost of cadmium is high due to the difficulty of separating it from zinc, cadmium electroplating is applied only in specialized situations. Cadmium also appears in the control rods of nuclear power plants where it's ready for absorption of Copper is an excellent conductor of electricity, so naturally it's used in the making of electricity cables. It's also bent into shape easily and does not react with water, so it's also used for water pipes. Scandium iodide is used in mercury vapor lamps, which are used to replicate sunlight in studios for the film and television industry. Scandium oxide is used to make high-intensity stadium lights. The radioactive isotope 45 is used in oil refineries as a tracing agent. Zinc is used in alloys such as brass, nickel, silver, and aluminum. Large quantities of zinc are used to produce die castings which are important in the automobile, electrical, and hardware industries. It is also extensively used to galvanize other metals such as iron to prevent rusting. The main use of chromium is in the production of non-ferrous alloys. Pure chromium, having a low ductility at normal temperatures, also finds many applications in electroplating, which is both a decorative and protective process. The total production of zinc is around 750,000 tons. Small amounts are used as catalysts for hydrogenation of unsaturated vegetable oils. Nickel is also well known as a useful catalyst for hydrogenation and other reactions in the lab and industry, often as the very finely divided form of Rene Nickel. Uh, uh, Thank you for
for listening to our presentation. Uh-huh.